All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kippard Skylon mod, which was originally made by user Captain Kippard. It's now being maintained by Jade of Mar. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your very own Skylon concept space plane which is pretty awesome. So let's uh, jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get. But before we do, there are some dependencies. Now one for sure dependency you will need is B9 part switch. Without that, a lot of the parts in here are not gonna function properly. Now that being said, there is also the community resource pack listed as a dependency, but then the mod page immediately goes on to say that it's not really necessary because the mod itself can define its own resources. So why it's listed as a dependency, I don't know, but it is, so I'm telling you. Now let's grab our Celsa Mark 1 cockpit for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter, just leaving on Kippard's Skylon. And let's take a look at the first part, the Skylon Control Core, which is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, SAS, and a battery holding 40 electric charge. So a pretty simple little command pod, but very nice and useful. And let's pop this thing on, and as you can see here, it's pretty comparable in size to the Mark I cockpit, and considering its size and shape, could really be used in a lot of other space planes outside of just things here, for the Skylon space plane. So a nice little one, and also does have some texture options where you can have either the black and white here or go all solid black. Now, these two texture options are on almost every single part in this mod. So I probably won't mention it maybe more than once or twice more because again, Almost every part has these two options, so uh, yeah, good to know, good to know. Now let's check this thing off and go to the fuel tanks category, where even though we only have four to go over, they're actually kind of complicated to go through. Let's take a look at the first one here, the Skylon Nose Auxiliary Tank, which can have one of four different fuel configurations, with either holding 12,000 liquid hydrogen or 6,000 liquid hydrogen with 400 oxidizer, or just 800 oxidizer, or finally, it could be just a structural part with no fuel whatsoever. And if we pop this thing on, as you can see, it starts going from the size that our command pod was and begins to taper into a much larger shape, which continues to get larger with the next few uh, tanks. Actually, the next, just the next one, really. But overall, a good little fuel tank there with a nice little internal space for you to put the landing gear on this thing, or, you know, whatever else you want to put in there, some science equipment, something along those lines, it's up to you. And let's pop this one off and then talk about the next tank here, which is the Skylon Nose Fuel Tank, which, oh boy, holds either 573,750 liquid hydrogen, or 286,875 liquid hydrogen with 19,125 oxidizer, or just 38,250 oxidizer, or finally be that structural part. And oh boy, it's a, it's a big structural part as you can see here. Now this is when it tapers to its largest size over there, which is rather quite large and is, well, frankly, massive and holding a load of fuel, but works well with the rest of the space plane. And as you can see, it, it does sort of continue that channel that we did have in the previous tank. You can see ending there to then going to just solid fuel. Well, as in solidly, yeah, you know what I mean, not actual solid fuel. But let's pop this one off and head to the next fuel tank, which is the Skylon Tail Auxiliary Tank, which can hold either 20,250 liquid hydrogen or 10,125 liquid hydrogen with 675 oxidizer or 1,350 oxidizer or finally be that structural component. And this one is really the final tail end of the aircraft when it tapers back down to a much smaller size as you can see there and is just another nice small little tank. 
And then, of course, we go to the final of the four fuel tanks here, which is the Skylon Tail fuel tank. Back to holding a lot with 430,200 liquid hydrogen, or 215,100 liquid hydrogen with 14,340 oxidizer, or 28,680 oxidizer, or finally, just that structural component. And this one goes from that large size uh, tapering on uh, down uh, to the size that we saw with the previous tank. So having the plane uh, going back to a uh, much more sleek rear end, uh, there we are. Just a nice other large freaking fuel tank. Now if we pop this baby off and head down to engines, we have two options here, with the first one being the Skylon OMS engine. A pretty decent little engine producing up to 300 max kilonewtons in a vacuum with an ISP max of 380 using the liquid hydrogen and oxidizer with a gimbling range of one degree. And it is a small, small little engine engine compared to the full few tanks we were just looking at and in fact goes on the very end of the uh, auxiliary tank to finally taper this thing off to its last point and it's just a nice little simple engine its particle effects are a little bit wonky at the moment hopefully they get updated in the future but hey it's still a functioning engine so good times now then after that we have oh boy the Skylon Saber and oh this is a powerful engine, where it can produce uh, one of two different thrusts depending on the mode you're going with. And the first thrust is 1,960 kilonewtons using liquid hydrogen, oxidizer, and air intake. So that is sort of your air-breathing atmospheric part of the engine. But then, once you just go down to the upper atmosphere or in space, it can produce up to 2,940 kilonewtons in vacuum max with an ISP of 350 using just the liquid hydrogen and oxidizer. Now it does have some gimbling and of course the two different uh, texture variants. And as you can see here is a nice gigantic freaking engine. It is a pretty darn good looking. And again, super powerful, which is very important with how large and heavy this aircraft can be. Well, let's pop that off, and you'll see that we have nothing, sadly, in command and control. In structural, though, we do have an interesting little piece, the Skylon Static Payload Bay Wheel Doors, which are literally just doors for the uh, landing gear bay specifically for the cargo section, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, the cargo section doesn't come with built-in doors, so you have to place uh, these things onto there, which, there we go, kind of pop it onto that, and they are just two solid black doors with the, you know, kind of... Uh, whatever color that is interior. My mind is suddenly blanking. Well, there we go. Doors to protect your wheels. Now, there is nothing in robotics, nor in coupling, but in payload, hey, we get that payload bay that we were just talking about in this thing. It's big. Now, it actually does have a few stats to it. It is a lifting surface, has its own built-in RCS reaction wheel, a fuel cell that will produce a nine electric charge per second using liquid hydrogen and oxidizer, and of course does have a battery holding up to a thousand electric charge and and hey, guess what? It has those same four switchable fuel tanks of either holding 96,750 liquid hydrogen or 48,375 liquid hydrogen with 3,225 oxidizer or 6,450 oxidizer or finally just being a structural part. And if we zoom out here, because oh boy, this part's big, and pop it on, you can see it is quite a large payload section, which does have the bay doors, which will open up at the top, so you can fit in quite a large payload to take into space. You will we'll also notice there are doors on either side. Now, these doors, don't worry, don't stay open. There is actually a door that you have to put onto them uh, later down in the list. And of course, the attachment points along the sides for you to put the wings on. And then of course, that is the place right there where those uh, wheel doors go to we were just talking about. Yes, a very nice large cargo bay. Now after that, we head into aerodynamics where we've got first and foremost, the Skylon canards, where we actually have them in either left 
and right varieties so that you do have two different ones there but they're the same canard and as you can see if we pop this thing on uh, let's see if I can actually get this thing properly rotated to where it needs to be there we go it's just a nice large usable canard now it does need to be attached to an attachment point which uh, was on one of the I think the nose fuel tank or the auxiliary nose fuel tank one of the two and uh, yeah so you cannot attach this radially so it's not the most useful thing for other space planes really only useful here but hey it works now the next part we have is the Skylon pre-cooler and this is what you're really gonna be putting your engine on the Saber engine and uh, yeah it's uh well, it has a resource converter taking liquid oxygen, electric charge, and air intake, and turning them into oxidizer if you so need. It is also an air intake, and then also holds liquid oxygen of a max of 50. And if we pop this thing on here, you can see it is just this interesting little uh, curved design to it with several attachment points on the front and back and the sides for attaching it to the wings. And of course, front for an air intake and on the back for the Sabre engine itself. Now, the next one we have is the air intake, or rather the Skylon Shock Cone intake, which is a resource intake bringing in liquid oxygen and also bringing in air intake, which is quite intriguing, and can hold a max of five liquid oxygen. So kind of odd that it brings in liquid oxygen and then the pre-cooler can make more well outputting oxidizer rather i apologize for that i got confused with all the different resources we have but yes if we pop on this uh nose cone intake there it's quite a large conical intake but pretty good looking excellent now the next thing we do have is the skylon vertical stabilizer which is a control surface and if we pop this baby on again this is another one of those that isn't uh, able to be attached or rather doesn't prefer to be attached radially. I mean, technically, as you can see here, it can, but uh, it, it really does prefer in what I've experienced to be attached to an attachment point. But if you do want to fiddle around with this thing, you can move it around and use it with other planes if you so desire. But yes, it is just a nice uh, vertical stabilizer with, of course, your flag. And the final two parts we have in here are the Skylon wing left and right. Much like with the canards, we have left and right versions of these to go on the plane, and they are control surfaces. And as you can see here, they are rather large, and these ones definitely do not like being attached radially. There we go. If we pop it on there, are just big old chunks of wing, which then the pre-cooler will attach onto the side there if you so desire. Well, actually, kind of necessary to attach it because that's where your main engines go. And there we are with that. Now, next, we're actually going to be in, of course, the ground category, which is a bit unusual because we have to turn off our mod filter because apparently the existing wheels that were a part of this mod are... Um, kind of broken in the latest version of the game so the mod maker did actually just do a retexture of three of the existing vanilla wheels so that you can have yourself a skylon alternate main gear skylon alternate nose gear and a skylon alternate small gear now besides the texturing on these they actually do all have higher stress tolerances than the vanilla wheels which is kind of necessary considering the size and weight of this plane but all in all as you can see here it is just a retexture of the same old inch or same old uh, landing gears that we have uh, there actually there's the right one excellent same deal, just black rather than white. Now, after that, if we just leave back on the filter, there we go, turn squad off. We've got nothing in thermal, nothing in electrical, nothing in communication, nor science, nor cargo, but in utility, we have the Skylon Payload Bay side door, which is that door I mentioned when we were talking about the payload bay, which goes on the payload bay. And yeah, it's just a, it's just a little door. Let's see if I can actually get this thing to attach properly. Oh boy, probably not. It really wants to be a part of that payload bay. And I'll probably never be able to get it to attach here properly. But yes, 
It's a door. Now that is all of the parts for this wonderful little mod. So let's actually open up a craft I made earlier using all the parts to build a proper Skylon uh, thing here. There we go, my Kippard Skylon plane. 24 parts in total. And as you can see, it is freaking gigantic. And at this point, I should actually point out something about this mod. And that is because of the size, weight, and power of this particular plane. It's really not meant for vanilla Kerbal Space Program. It's more intended for more scaled up universes, either 3.5 times size or even real solar system mod. Because uh, yes, the thing on this, it's so powerful that... Honestly, I've only got half these tanks full of fuel, and I could easily get this thing into space. It just has that much power. And remember, I mean, that's how much liquid hydrogen this thing holds. Over a half a million of it. It's a lot. But hey, even in the vanilla version of the game, it's still pretty fun. So let's head on out uh, to the runway and just take a brief look at this thing in flight. And, of course, once we do, we'll take a quick little gander at... There we go. We can open up our side door there. Perfect. Nice, smooth animation so you can get in and out of that uh, middle payload section. And, of course, we do have our open bay doors so you can put your various cargoes into here to release space station sections, satellites, whatever it may be. Now, an interesting thing you can do is you can actually change what fuel tank configuration your plane has even here while you're in flight, which is a little bit odd, but can be kind of useful. A little cheaty, but useful. Like, say, you get to your space station and you want to bring back another resource or you need to transfer to another place with a specific resource you can just right click on any of these select the fuel type and yes it will remove the current one but if you do it you'll then be able to switch it to another one and that it's kind of useful i like that Weird, but useful. But let's actually take this thing off and uh, turn on SAS and fire the engines. Oh boy, we've kind of been moving to the side there, so let's sort of uh, angle back straightward. And it doesn't take long for this thing to take off, considering, again, this is really made for the larger sorts of solar system mods. I, you got to do it carefully, though, because how long the back end is, I've destroyed the tail of this thing on multiple takeoffs so far testing. And yeah, we are already up to over... Well, we just kind of lost a bit of speed there, but we were at, for a moment, 400 meters per second. And actually, if we throttle way down so we don't have the uh, atmospheric effects on here, it's uh, it can really keep itself up in the air with far, far less throttle than most of the space planes I personally have ever created. Then again, that's mainly because I'm awful at making space planes. But yes, it is a cool set of parts to make yourself a fun concept supersonic aircraft, basically. And that, that is a wonderful thing. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!